Hi, this is a quick video introduction to the um, SIMPS-1 system. Zana has a very modular approach um, to photoelectrochemical workstations, which means great flexibility. But we also, um, that flexibility also leads to sort of complexity in, in choosing what um, the system to go for. So this video is specifically describing what's in the SIMPS-1 system. Here I just list out the systems, um, the Zana photoelectrochemical workstation systems that are available and I'm going to do a video on, on each one. So there's a SIMPS 1, 2, 3 and 4, there's a SIMPS um, QE IPC2 and a IPC um, E3. So in total there's um, six systems. So this video is specifically looking at the first system, the SIMPS 1 system. So this is just a quick overview picture. And I'm just going to tell you very quickly what's not included. I'm going, to I'm going to tell you about every box in this picture. But I'm also going to tell you that the PEC2 cell, which is where you put your kind of chemistry on your electrochemistry, that's not included. It's an option and you can choose it as an option. So that PEC2 cell, when I'm sort of moving my mouse around on, that's not included in the SIMPS1 system. And it's an option. You are, and I'm hovering my mouse around something called the LDA2 um, box, which is sort of controls the light. That is included, but I'm going to tell you that here there's four thumb screws, and this is how you screw in different um, light bulbs or LEDs. These light bulbs or LEDs are not included. So the SIMPS1 system, I'm going to talk about the boxes, but I'm going to specifically tell you now, and I'll repeat it, that you have to choose the light as an option, so it's not included in the SIMPS system. And you also have to choose the PEC, that's the PEC cell, that's not included in the system. Just to say what controlled means in the controlled intensity modulated photospectroscopy. So when you get a SIMP system, um, and there's a sensor included in the system. And what the sensor does is it sits adjacent to the sample. So this, so for example, you'll get a PEC cell and into your PEC cell, you'll put your sort of electrochemical or photoelectrochemical experiment and your electrodes and what the sensor does is it sits adjacent to that cell and it's measuring the light intensity and so the Zana controlled intensity modulated photospectrometer system is the only one with a feedback loop where we measure the intensity of the light and modulate the current to the light source to give you the intensity that you've asked for any other system on the market, not from Zana, does not have a sensor continually monitoring the light intensity. And so when you're asking for light intensity, the manufacturer is just assuming that the LED or the light bulb is um, always constant in the way it behaves. It doesn't change with time, i.e. it doesn't age, and it doesn't change with temperature. These are both um, assumptions and actually not true. So the really nice thing about the Zana system is the big C in that we've got a control sensor that's continually monitoring the light intensity and we're contr continually controlling the power to the light source in order to give the intensity that you've requested. So as I say this video is specifically about what's in the SIMPS1 um, hardware. So what's in there? There's a Xenium workstation. So the Xenium workstation is a impedance spectrometer and it's a potentiostat galvanostat all combined. Um, some of the other systems, specifically the SIMPS3 and for example the SIMPS4, have the IM6 um, potentiostat. The IM6 is a slightly higher grade potentiostat, but in the SIMPS1 system you get the Xenium um, workstation. The next thing you, also, you get with the SIMPS1 system is the XBOT potentiostat. This is a slave to the Xenium system, but it's also a standalone potentiostat as well. And we use the potentiostat as the power supply to another part of the system, which is called the LDA2. So I'm going to touch on the LDA2 in a bit, but it's going to get its power from this slave potentiostat. Just note that the export provides a maximum current of 500 milliamps so when you're choosing your light bulb or your light source your led we show in our options table the kind of currents that you're that they will expect so for some of the light sources 
you'll need greater current than 500 milliamps, at which point then you have to choose a SIMP system that has the PP211 potential stat. But in our SIMPS1 system, you get the XPOT potential stat, which is also a standalone potential stat, and it has a maximum current of 500 milliamps. Right, so in the SIMPS1 system, you also get the optical bench. So the optical bench allows you to place the sensor. So there's a sensor here that, that monitors the light intensity and the light source is being powered by the LDA2 box. So the LDA2 box sits on the optical bench. The light sensor sits on the optical bench. And then there's also a term here, SIMPEC. This, video, this picture here just shows you that these, um, it shows a sensor in front of a PEC2 cell. So that's where the sensor sits. The LDA box, this is a good picture of it because it shows the LDA box, but here there's a hole and that's because we haven't put the light bulb or the LED in here. So that's what you get and then you have to choose as an option which light bulb, let's say, or LED set that you want in there. And then finally the SIMPEC. The SIMPEC is a model cell or a kind of calibration board which has um, um, four uh, photoactive diodes on it and this is a way of basically calibrating and checking that the system is working correctly it allows you to run through various software testing and checking and learning without actually having to have a photoelectric electric experiment so it's you know in simple terms it's kind of calibration board or a dummy cell let's say so in the sims one system you get the Xenium potential stat, not the IM6. You get the XPOT potential stat, which can provide currents up to about 500 milliamps. It's not the PP211, which can provide up to 10 amps of current. In the SIMS1 system, you get the optical bench, which allows you to place the LDA2 box on there. That effectively provides the kind of current of voltage to light that you will screw into the front of this box but you have to choose those as an option the optical bench also allows you to place the optical sensor so we have a sensor that you can place in front of your PEC2 cell and it will measure the light intensity and control effectively the LDA2 in order that you get the light intensity that you're asking for but the PEC2 cell is also an option that you'll have to include and then finally on the hardware front you have this SIMPEC which is effectively a dummy cell containing four diodes and discrete electrical components and allows you to calibrate, check, test, make sure everything's working fine without actually having to have a photoelectrochemical experiment running. Now I'm just going to touch finally that also the system comes with the Simpson Thales software package. So just to say that um, to highlight you get the, the Xenium, the, the just to highlight, you get the Zarnia Xenium potential stat, you get the XPOT potential stat, you get the um, optical bench, you get a sensor, you get the LDA2, but not with the lights screwed in, and you get a um, Simpec dummy cell. Finally, on the software, um, you get the full software suite for SIMPS. So you can do solar cell fill factor efficiencies, maximum currents, um, intensity modulated photospectroscopy. This SIMPS is proprietary and um, is the controlled version of um, IMPS. You can do intensity modulated photospectroscopy, controlled um, IMVS. You can do charge extraction as defined by um, Laurie Peter from Bath. You can do light transient measurements, time domain measurements, D versus, I'm sorry, DC versus intensity transfer functions, and chopped light voltometry. So that's a quick definition of what comes in the SIMPS1 um, package. Okay, I hope that helps.